So, you might be asking, what is it I got on the table today? And if you said Mac Mini, well, you're kinda right. Except this is a special Mac Mini. It's actually a developer transition kit. Now, if you're here from Luke's video, you'll have already seen a bulk of this Mac Mini being unboxed and taken apart a little bit but not a whole lot outside of benchmarks. So today I wanna to dive into the nitty gritty behind the developer transition kit. So let's go ahead and take it out of its box. Now, unfortunately, the packaging isn't really much to write home about because again, it is a Mac Mini. For all extensive purposes, they just recycled the Mac Mini packaging. Outside of this cute little note on the inside that says the future is yours to write. And if you pull it out, there's even a special little card that tells you congratulations on being one of the first developers for Mac powered by Apple Silicon. Go to the developer site to find everything you need to get started. You've got a little booklet and Apple stickers. It's not an Apple product without the Apple stickers. So let's get rid of the box. So if we go ahead and peel off the packaging, we look at the bottom, we'll see it is a Mac mini. The only real clue we get is when we go to remove the rest of the packaging, the IO is not exactly what we'd expect to see on a 2018 Mac mini. Instead of having four type C ports, it's only two. As you'll see, they're actually unlabeled because they're not even Thunderbolt ports. They're only USB 3.1. There's an HDMI, two USBs, headphone jack, internet, and power. It's pretty bog standard, however, severely lacking. And it's definitely a weird middle ground compared to the 2018 Mac mini and the M1 Mac mini. So now we've got it all set up. I've got a monitor in front of me, HDMI plugged in and the DTK turned on. Now, as we look at the desktop here, you might see it looks pretty much like any Mac ever. It's Big Sur and it looks normal. And you know, it sort of is. If we hop into about this Mac, we will see the Mac does recognize as Apple development platform. It does know it has an A12Z and 16 gigs of memory. If we jump into system report, it does recognize as Apple development platform, ADP 3,2, which is the DTK, the A12Z Bionic, and it has eight cores for performance for efficiency. It isn't a whole lot off from an M1 Mac mini. If we jump down to Thunderbolt, you will see, interestingly, it does say no hardware found, which if we look at USB, you will see there is a USB 3.1 bus because the two type C ports on the back are USB 3.1. I don't know if it was could not, would not, or did not want to, but did not ship Thunderbolt on these. It is all USB 3.1. I do have this Magic Keyboard connected via lightning cable. That in itself is a whole nother can of worms because these, rather unsurprisingly, actually do not get software updates. They stopped updating these at 11.2.3. And even then, the updates, especially per the dev forms, were rather janky. Some of the OTAs bricking the DTKs and requiring a DFU restore which that in itself is a different can of worms because these being some of the first Apple Silicon Mac minis actually take firmware via IPSWs. And Apple, especially with these earlier builds, were a little confused per se on whether they wanted to treat these like Mac OS with the recovery partition and re being able to reinstall the OS from recovery or if they wanted to just have it be IPSWs like restoring an iPhone. Interestingly, something me and Luke discovered in our testing is this DTK has been updated from the original build it shipped on. The original build the DTK shipped on, Final Cut would not work. And that was actually due to the fact that it excluded graphics drivers completely. As to why they did that, I don't know. I would venture to guess these early DTK builds just didn't have everything they needed. As we'll see opening a project, Final Cut does work. Honestly, the timeline scrubbing is not bad. And to Luke's point with benchmarking, this thing really is pretty damn close to an M1 Mac Mini. It is kind of crazy to think that this came out at the same time as the 2018 Mac Mini at the same event 
And this would be the future of computing and so much faster than its Intel counterparts. If we jump into terminal, we'll see it really isn't a whole lot different than any other Mac mini. We can see the kernel version it's running. You can see it is from 2020, one of the later versions that these could run. We can also see the time is all screwed up in the corner with the date being incorrect and the time being incorrect. Now this is a fun byproduct of the SMC on these. There are three coin cell batteries on the board and the SMC will drain those in six months. It's very janky. Interestingly enough too, you can't hear the fan, but you can feel it and it is there. The fan runs at a constant speed. It does not go up, it does not go down. And that almost seems to be entirely the byproduct of this not even having an onboard temperature sensor. This is really a rushed, slapped together Mac Mini. Now, if we jump into displays, we'll see that it does look pretty normal. However, scaled resolutions were pretty much limited to 1080. And this really does not seem to like to do more than 4K on literally any display. That almost seems entirely entirely byproduct of Apple rushing to put it out. The USB-C ports will do display up to 1080, plugged into its studio display, looks absolutely horrific. And it's not like the chip can't do more, Apple just didn't allow it to do more. Ultimately, that is what this is. It could do a lot more, but it never was intended to. The biggest function these had was to allow developers to write their apps for Apple Silicon in test performance. And especially looking at Geekbench scores, it's only about 2000 points off of an M1 Mac mini. This is in essence, identical to what we saw released with the M1. And in that stance, it's really cool. It can't do a lot and it does not serve a practical function, but this is perhaps one of, if not my favorite products I've ever had my hands on. Because it's so janky, but it works just barely. And it worked enough, Apple sent however many of them to developers and then sadly destroyed the rest. So let's jump on inside and take a look at the wonderful jank that lies waiting. Let's dive right on inside. Thanks to our handy dandy iFixit toolkit, it is pretty easy to open one of these bad boys up. Now, initially, the actual disassembly is not any different from an ordinary Mac Mini. Now you'll see if we break it open, it again looks like any bog standard Mac Mini. We have the normal assortment of Torx security screws and RF plate and antenna from pretty much every Mac Mini that's been made in the last five or so years. Now if we jump to having removed the Wi-Fi plate, we'll see this is where our first hint of something different comes into play because this does look somewhat like a Mac mini, but we'll see there's a couple coin cell batteries here and the board does look rather unique, let's say. Now, after removing the fan and exposing the PCB, we can really see there's a lot of dead space on this board and it is honestly sort of absurdly simple. However, it only really gets worse from here. So let's go ahead and actually pull out the board itself. Having pulled the board out, now we can jump into actually looking at it. From a brief overview, you can see how absurdly simple it is. I mean, chiefly, form factor wise, this is identical to the 2018 Mac Mini. Obviously not from a component standpoint, but from a board layout, completely identical. This whole Wi-Fi array speaker area, copy paste. They changed nothing about the speaker they use, the Wi-Fi antennas, none of that's changed. You have the two NAND chips here, you have a slew of voltage regulating components and interestingly enough, three CR1632 batteries. Now you might ask why three? So there's a fact and a theory. The fact is the SMC on this drains battery at such a rate that it actually only lasts for about six months with these three batteries. Now my theory as to why that's the case is that this was probably rushed out the door for developers. So Apple was just kind of rushing to throw everything together 
And they're like, ah, you know, we're gonna get all these back at the end of the six month lease program. So it doesn't really matter. If we flip the board over, we'll see again, really, really simple. You have the board revision and model number, more voltage stuff. You have a whole little cluster of dense chips here. I believe these manage primarily the display subsystem as well as the USB 3.1. Interestingly enough, you'll actually notice it does say force DFU on off PMU reset, as well as a slew of other little labels in corresponding areas. What would go here typically would be little switches or status LEDs. However, as you can see, they're not present. It's interesting although that the writing is present here, especially the dev one with the header that's exposed, because this is very common on prototype revisions of logic boards. And this right here, it's not a prototype. This is just a bog standard normal DTK. However, it seems Apple pretty much didn't change anything in the rounds of prototypes. They just went ahead, did maybe one or two rounds of prototypes, Go went, oh, okay, it works, and shipped the product to developers. And given that this did not see a wide release and would have been returned at the end of the lease period, there honestly was no reason to spend a whole lot of time on development for it, which is evident by the recycled nature of pretty much everything on here and the simplicity. Funny enough, as we saw in the software, the only temperature sensor on this entire board is with these two SSDs. There isn't a sensor anywhere else. And it makes sense. The A12Z chip here, it's an iPad chip. It worked fine in an iPad without heat. They didn't really do a whole lot of tinkering to it. All they did was give it more RAM, it has 16 instead of 12 gigs, and some more storage in a massive heatsink. It's more than fine. It's a really cool piece of hardware because it was never meant to see the light of day, but now we have it here. And it's awesome to see how kind of rushed and slapdash together it is because Apple does not put products out like this. Yet here it is, a janky as all hell DTK. Let's get it back together and wrap up. We got the DTK back together and it's horribly janky goodness. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. This is honestly not as bad as I thought it would be, but pretty bad. Apple definitely rushed this out the door and made sure they could get something to developers. If this was a shipping product, I'd bet it would be a lot better than it is but it's not bad. It's crazy that this still holds up with the M1 Mac Mini and likely might for a while to come. It's kind of sad they killed updates on it, but it was awesome taking a look at this super unique, never really before seen product. I hope you liked the video and stay tuned for more wacky things like this to come. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them.